What we're going to illustrate, and you'll see as we lift the, uh, the crucible, is the lifter has some unique hinges here that will contour to the bottom of the crucible. And as we attach these cables to the lifting point, you'll see how it tightens this cable up. So you're actually lifting this, as I say, from the bottom, from a common lifting point. As you can see, we have now attached the cables. Now we'll lift this up, and the cables will tighten and have a good uniform lifting of the crucible. Okay, before we start putting refractory in this coreless induction furnace, we've got to make sure that we don't have anything in our pockets. This is, uh, will ruin your installation. So I'm going to check, get rid of all the pens I might have in my pocket. This jacket here has an inside pocket. Got a pair of, pair of glasses. I want to get rid of that. I want to get rid of the keys you might have in your pocket. And probably one of the most overlooked items is coins in your pocket. Get rid of all that before you install any refractory or crucible in a coreless induction furnace. For the larger furnaces, we recommend using the mica paper. This furnace here is a 2,000 pound furnace with a large crucible, so the mica paper is what we recommend for that type of a furnace. Okay, we've installed the mica paper in the furnace. It goes around the, the inside circumference, and we are now covering up the uh, cuts we made at the top of the mica paper so that uh, none of the refractory goes down back of the mica paper. Now the crucible is ready to have the dry vibe installed. We have made sure that the inside has been cleaned and vacuumed out. There's no particulates in there. We're now installing a VibraMag, a high magnesia material in the bottom. If you notice we're wearing a N95 particle mask because you can see there's a lot of dust when you set settle this in. You also have to make sure no paper from cutting the bags uh, get into the bottom of the refractory. Typically we install this in three to four inch layers. We we'll then de-air it, ram it, and add the next layer uh, in between. Now that the refractory has been installed into the crucible, uh, we will now de-air it and ram it and level the uh, refractory to make sure we have a nice level bottom. Right now, typically, you'll make about three, three passes of the de-airing tool to level the mix that will then be followed with the ramming tool. Something. Now that the uh, de-airing is done of the refractory, now that it, and it's been leveled, we'll now ram it three times to make sure that the bottom is nice and dense. You'll note that the uh, bottom of the uh, furnace here has been rammed and that the leak detectors are in place. The leak detector wires need to be in intimate contact with the bottom of the crucible, but not penetrating the bottom surface of the crucible. It's important to remove the bottom glaze of the crucible to make sure you have intimate contact with the bottom and the ground fault wires. This can be accomplished by using a wire brush such as this or a, a hand stone. Do not, under any circumstances, use a power grinder because this will re remove part of the crucible structure itself.
We've centered and leveled the crucible in the furnace and we use shims, wooden shims, to hold it in place. Now that the crucible has been installed and centered in the furnace so using wedges to make sure we have equal distance uh, for dry run to the factory, we then put a cover on top of the crucible to prohibit any excessive refractory from getting down inside the crucible, making for any undue cleanup. Now that the next layer of refractory has been installed, we now use the forking tool to de-air the mix and actually settle it before we then start ramming. This is very important to make sure you knit the layers together. Three passes will be made around the crucible. Now that three passes have been made with a daring tool, now we have a tool to ram the side walls, again, that's contoured to fit around the crucible. Again, three passes will be made with this tool. Ready? Now that we have rammed that layer, uh, three passes will now take the daring tool to actually scratch the next surface so that the uh, next addition of the refractor will knit together so you have no laminations in the ram structure. Okay, we bring up the refractory. This is, in this case, this is VibraMag 95, all the way to the top of the crucible, but you leave one inch of the circumference of the crucible showing. This is so it'll knit together with the phosphonated plastic, which is going to go up and form your lip and the cover on top of this. And after you've done that, you can remove your cover from your crucible. There shouldn't be any refractory down inside the crucible. Okay, the um, top cap and the spout on top of the crucible is going to be 90 ram PC. Uh, this material is phosphoric acid bonded refractory, and so you use a latex type glove whenever you're working with it. Okay, what we're doing is we're breaking apart the uh, 90 ram PC putting it in sections around the top of the crucible and then we're going to work it in with the hammer to get a good bond between the refractory, the MGO refractory on the bottom and the phosphonated plastic on the top. We're done, aren't we? Okay, after we get the plastic in, all the way around, sealing the top of the crucible in that, we form our spout generally with a uh, steel tube of some sort. Gives you a nice little spout like that. Final step is you've got to drill holes all through the plastic top cap. That allows the refractory to breathe and for anything trapped underneath the plastic. So you actually do it in the spout area and in the area where the refractory is, all the way around. 